I think I run for freedom. I don't want to say that I'm not here for performance because at the end of the day, I'm looking for a personal challenge, but I also need to be realistic where I am in my running life. And sometimes I, I look at him and I think, okay, you're doing too much. Christian Meyer will always be chasing something. There is no end goal for him. Is he'll just, I did this? What's next? What are we doing next? How can I go further? I would definitely say it's a bit of a reflection on my personality because, I mean, I just loved it. I loved it so much. It's, it's his whole life. Like cycling has been his whole life. I really, really loved cycling. I really loved training. I really loved being outside and riding and racing was almost um, secondary. Racing to me was sort of what I needed to do to do the first one. When he did the Tour de France, we had reached, in my mind, this pinnacle of, this is it. Everything we've worked for, we're done. And the next day, he got a call up from his director. He had to go to a race. And it was just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. This is not even close to over. This is maybe the halfway point. And so I had a little bit of a breakdown and I told Christian, look, I'm gonna need to do something for me. I love people, I love working. And I said, I need to do something that I can really pour myself into the way you have into cycling. And so we made the decision together to open La Fabrica and he had this huge passion. He's passionate about everything, but he had this huge passion for coffee. And again, he was still full-time cyclist, but we thought, okay, let's start this little venture to open a cafe. You know, we thought it could work, maybe, maybe not, but it wasn't even about that. It was more just about having something for, for us to, to follow our passions and, and sort of keep growing. And those other businesses, they generally, they evolve from my passions and the things that I really love in those moments. You know, Espresso Mafia came after we opened La Fabrica. I was so much into coffee and I really wanted to roast the coffee. And it was the same with the service course. You know, when I left professional racing, I still loved cycling and I wanted to enjoy cycling. On the other hand, I think a lot of it is about not setting limits for yourself. If you really choose to do something, there's no reason you can't accomplish it. And so for us at a certain point, a small business is, if I think that it's really cool, I kind of just want to do it. You know, if it works out or not, it's a different story, but I think there's no reason I say, oh, well, I shouldn't do that. Other than now, maybe I don't have enough time, but you know, generally um, I try to eliminate a little bit of that fear of failing at something and just trying things and, and sort of seeing what happens and, and taking the learning experiences that you get from each one as valuable life lessons. Personal growth has always been something I've chased since a, a young child. I didn't see any more potential growth in that, in the ecosystem of, of professional cycling. On the outside, we had these new businesses and we had uh, coffee and we had these other exciting things to me that were like, you know, I, I was seeing a lot of improvement and growth and I decided that I wanted to shift my focus. At that point, I didn't really feel like uh, I was letting anything go from cycling because I wasn't attached to the racing. I was attached to the cycling and the cycling was something I could continue to do whilst I was, you know, progressing in, in coffee and the businesses and, and growing these other personal goals. 
that was probably the only time in our relationship where I've ever seen sports come secondary. And I think when you take the athletics out of him, that's when he doesn't really know who he is. And I think he went a bit far down the rabbit hole in what he was trying to create with the bike shop and with so many people being involved that he kind of lost his identity for a bit. Leaving the service course is very, very, very difficult for me because it was something that I felt encompassed everything that I loved to do, and it was amazing. I struggled to leave that behind, and it wasn't necessarily the cycling, but it was all that other stuff, you know, that I really dedicated a good amount of my sort of real energy into, into building that. So to leave that was very, very difficult. You know, there was a very strong association between myself and the service course. I didn't really want to put myself out there in terms of going to group rides or going to events or going things where people were always asking me about that. For me, cycling for that period of time was, was not fun. I saw him have to bury a big part of who he was, but through that I saw how he then pivoted and turned to running. It really made me think a lot about why do I struggle so much to let this go? What is it? It's not the cycling. You know, it's not the biking. Is it the recognition? I don't know. Is it egotistical? Is it, you know, is it the one thing I felt I was good at and I lost that and now nobody will ever remember who I was? Or, you know, why are we so attached and, and why is it so difficult to disconnect? You know, over time I started to realize that what I loved about cycling, it was about the challenge, it was about being amongst people in a community. It was all these other things that actually weren't the bike. It just became a matter of, wow, I can actually find all that same stuff running or doing something else. But I need to just have that perspective and actually probably let go of everything. You know, it's not just the biking, but let go of, of being one thing because each person is, is so much more than one thing. I mean, we are not one thing, we're all things. So, you know, if that's from being a friend to a husband, to a business owner, to a, you know, we're made up of so many pieces that make us the whole thing. It seems ridiculous that you attach so much emotional energy to just one part of who you are. It was a very big year for me in terms of personal growth emotionally. Um, you know, I was never really a very emotional person as a, as a, as a professional cyclist. I mean, we were very kind of robotic and, you know, and that changed a lot for me being, you know, much more sort of in tune with how I'm feeling and what I'm feeling and uh, understanding why and, and letting those feelings happen and not trying to bury them or stuff like that. And it's just kind of allowed me to be much freer. dream of the front obviously I mean it's kind of like yeah it's amazing um, do you dream of running fast yeah I mean uh, I love to run and I, and I really love to train and the races are the moment where you get to see how the, the journey of growth has gone my only reference point is an ultra I did last year of 100 kilometers and at that point when I finished that race I knew I had more. I knew I could, I could progress and I could do a better race than I did that day.
I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You know, I still get goosebumps now thinking about, about that moment. Um, You know, you start to have doubts. You know, you start thinking about like, well, am I training correct? What am I doing wrong? And I, did I train too much? Am I too tired? That day really, for me, was hard physically. But I still pushed through and I finished the race. I very easily could have just, you know, after a speed just ended, stopped, turned around and, and gone the fastest way home. But it's usually in the low points that you learn a lot more about yourself in the high points. You know, in the high points and everything is going great. You know, you generally don't question things. You don't uh, try to make changes. You don't, I mean, you just kind of are always going because everything is doing great. But when things are going really bad, sometimes it really makes you sort of dig in and reflect and make sure what you're doing is correct. And if not, correct the path. And then you've learned something to take on to the next one. Good question. <laughs> Yesterday I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, well, it was actually an 80k version, which is a nice distance too. No, but I think last year I was just super, uh, super motivated, especially after Ultra PNU doing 100 that I really wanted to do one more. I mean, no, I'm really excited to do the, the 120. It's really what I want to do. It's been a long time since I've done like a, a really, really long run. And I think that's kind of what's really exciting at the moment. Um, especially because I'm thinking like, why? I think it's really like, it's kind of like a small vacation, you know, because it's like 14, 15 hours, whatever it takes, where you really just, the only thing you have to think about in that moment is like, just worry about running and doing your event. You know, you don't have to worry about anything else. So it's kind of like a mini break from everyday life. So, pretty excited for that. <laughs> How do you say, Christian? Good. I think he just wants to go. He just wants to run. All this waiting around makes him bored. Too much. Too much. You need to go. <laughs> what are you looking to achieve? If you could just get one thing out of this race, just one thing. Where are the interviews? Uh, but this, I wasn't there. I want to know. If you just want to walk away with one thing. You just want to have fun? You just want to have fun. Yeah. Easy. At a certain point, maybe I don't give myself enough credit because I expect myself to be able to do that very quickly. Um, and sometimes I try to step back a little bit and think like, okay, you know, you've been running for one year. You can get really excited and you just go from one thing to the next. And, you know, you push through things quite quickly. But my biggest fear is not finishing in a, and not having, in my case, what I would consider a successful race. That's probably my biggest fear.
supposed to be around the corner. He was, every headlight I saw, he's coming up next, but it's gotta be him. And people just kept coming, not him, not him, not him. And I felt something's wrong. And finally, back, way back, he comes out. And the first thing he does is come up to me and he's just, he can't breathe. I know it's frustrating, but it's fine. There's gonna be a lot more of these. And if this is how you're feeling now in the race, I think that might be your body trying to tell you something. It was a really hard moment to see him suffering so much, in so much pain, with all these red flags of, okay, my husband can't breathe, knowing that he just wanted to catch his breath and keep going. And I kind of felt a bit of, not like this bad person, but I had to tell him, like, Christian, you can't continue. Like, you have to stop. You have to listen to your body. Yeah, I mean, I think initially after after Zagama, we were questioning a bit more around fatigue. After Labarado, I really realized that there was a an issue. At that point, we were a bit scared because we didn't know what it was. We had no idea, but he couldn't breathe. So we knew something was bad. Not long after that, I went to a sports specialist in Girona. They were more inclined to look specifically straight away at at the blood and at long COVID. I think when Christian found out, it was just this big relief for himself because as an athlete as well, if something is going wrong, you need a reason why it's going wrong. You can't just have it go wrong. You need an answer because you need a solution because you need to fix it because you need to get out doing what you want to do. And so when he found out it was long-term COVID, I think it was just a big sense of relief for him. It was a really good diagnosis from what the possibilities could have been. So now, as you see now, all looks clean and perfect. There is no signals. As I said, and honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with mm. with, with, with him right now. And it's not a joke. I think mm. I think there's still a big improvement to come because it's, we just start with this thing. Mm. But we really found the the key of the why he was not going well, and then how to perform that. Apart that, for sure, he had this massive infection mm. to break completely you in pieces mm. because you have a really big infection and you keep training. Mm. You actually was lucky to not make it worse with the yeah. pericarditis or myocarditis or mm. any kind of a complication of this kind of, of disease. It was lucky that we found it, we can stop you. All right. Perfect. are on UTMB this week from trail running around the world. You know, in, in, in theory, some of the best, if not the best ultra trail runners are here this week um, on the most iconic courses of, of ultra trail running. I'm just really excited to go have a long day in the mountains, you know, like there's no other way I'd rather spend my day than being out in these mountains just running all day. Um, and I think you kind of have to look at it that way. It's like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of excitement going on with the race. But I think if you really narrow it down, we're just out there having fun in the mountains, doing the best that we can, and that's all we can do. This is the one that I've probably felt the least nervous for this year. I really just want to push that finish line. I don't really have an expectation of really a certain time or a certain position in the end and now knowing that realistically physically i should be fine and it's just about going out on the day and and just running During the race, perspective changed quickly into what was going to happen. I started cramping at both my hamstrings, which was absolutely terrible. When it started, I, I realized, okay, I've got 70 kilometers ahead of me that uh, are going to suck. But I knew in that moment that I needed to finish the race, no matter what.
I honestly feel a bit traumatized. No way. You guys are amazing. Good job, man. <laughs> you know how much I guess today was really uh, a lesson in suffering. Not that I think thought I really needed one, but um, in the end, I think the, the one moment I didn't suffer was crossing the finish line. <laughs> you know, sitting here now, some months later, realizing that, you know, the position you were in at the time and the expectations that you were putting on yourself were both very real, unrealistic. Um, and obviously I went to CCC and, 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 and course of the race and, and had my issues. And it was kind of that turning point in the season where from there things improved. Obviously it wasn't what I had hoped for at the beginning of the season, but looking back, it was crucial. Yeah, Overland is a really special project. One thing that I realized after I left um, the service course was I really felt that there was something missing from my day to day. I felt, you know, I had all this time to, to go and run and to do stuff and to, but I really felt, I guess I would say felt kind of lonely, to be honest. I realized after a, a short period that what I was really missing from my life was community and being around people and sharing my passions with like-minded people and and everything that comes with that and Overland for me was really a project about getting that back thanks for coming Nice group tonight, uh, another full moon run. So we're gonna do the same as we kind of always do. We're gonna go uh, San Miguel, check out the moon at the top, come down. Then we'll come back, grab our stuff. Tonight we're doing, uh, we have the addition of pizza to wine. So we're actually gonna go to a place on Cradle of Forza. So we'll come back, grab our stuff, and then we can all go up there together. <laughs> I guess why in the beginning I felt lost was a little bit around that part of um, being almost alone, like not having community and, and not having uh, people around. I think at the end, the whole thing is like, just enjoying running with people. He is now the happiest I've ever seen him. And so I do believe that Everything does happen for a reason, and sometimes I look and think, oh, you know, if this wouldn't have happened, maybe we wouldn't be happy here. And if you're happy where you are in the moment, you can't regret anything that's happened because it's what let you here. And so for the moment, at the moment, he's really happy.